What's up guys, I'm Andy. In this video, we're gonna check out this Chevy Cobalt. For some reason, it doesn't run. I don't know exactly what the problem is, so let's check it out. First thing I wanna do is confirm what's going on. So, so it, it does crank and it does sputter for a second. Or it did. All right, so let's see. So the fact that it sputters a little bit, I'm not worried about the battery. If it wasn't, if it wasn't starting over a little bit, then uh, I would want to put a jumper pack on. But it seems like we're good there. So let's turn the key on and just scan test it, see if we can find anything, see what's going on. All right, so we want to type in the vehicle. Sometimes these scan tools take a long time. Chevy Cobalt, health report, automatic transmission. All right, so now it's scanning for codes and seeing we do have two fault codes, so that's good. It's always good when you have codes. All right, so those are the only two codes. Let's click on those, see what's going on. Read the codes. <laughs> fuel pump relay control circuit. And fuel trim cell balance. All right, so we want to check out what's going on with this fuel pump relay circuit. Um, there could be possibly a bad relay. So normally when you take the key and you put it in the ignition, you can listen and sometimes you'll hear a fuel pump going. Sometimes the pump's loud enough that you really hear it pretty good. I don't hear any fuel pump going. So that's a good indication that could be our problem. All right. So let's back out of this. We'll write those codes down. It's always easy to just take a picture of the scan tool. Or if you have one of those higher end scan tools, you can probably take a picture of that. Actually, this one probably does that too. How do I do that? Let's see. Look at that. Easy. All right, we'll shut this off for now. All right, let's take a quick look under the hood, see if we see anything. See if there's anything obvious. You know, the fuse box is right here. Battery and the computer are underneath here. There's the PCM. So I can pull this up and take a quick look. I don't see any uh, rodent evidence or anything, which is good. And that's where the fuel pump relay is, right there. So that would be that one. Now what we could do is actually find if there's another relay that has the same number and swap it. So this one right here has the same number. And that's for the AC, so we could swap those. Uh, before we do that, I am gonna go on the computer and just take a quick look at those codes and see if there's any information before we start messing around with anything. So the first thing we wanna do is type in that code into the computer and see if we have any TSBs, which there actually is. TSB is a technical service bulletin and it's just pretty much information that the manufacturer has on the vehicle. There may be a problem that's not very common. So some owners may find the SCS light on and on closer inspection, you'll have this code with the fuel pump relay circuit. It may be stored in the PCM. Now, let me just read up on this a little bit more. So what this basically says is just check and see if there's any aftermarket devices in the vehicle causing, that could potentially cause this code. If there's some type of aftermarket alarm or remote start, 
that could shut off the fuel pump. Um, that could be causing it. Uh, most of this is stored in the PCM as history, but our code is actually current if you check where failed and current. So this technically doesn't apply to us in this case, although it would be good to see if there is a uh, remote start, but I don't think there is one in this vehicle. So let's back out of here, close this, go back to the actual description of the code. View pump control relay. So this is the code we have. And we can go through the chart and see what it says. Circuit testing, you can figure out how. Turn the ignition off, disconnect the fuel pump relay, and test all these circuits. Let's see. So they're having you test the ground circuit first, see if there's less than five ohms of resistance between the ground circuit and a ground. Connect test light between the circuits and the ground. So command the fuel pump relay on and off. So some scan tools, you may be able to command the fuel pump relay on and off. This scan tool cannot do that, which is too bad. And if you had a test light on there. Whoops. All right. So in that case, after reading this, if all those tests test normal, then it says replace the fuel pump relay. We got a wiring diagram of what's going on here. It's always great to print up a wiring diagram. Um, so this is the relay that we're testing, the fuel pump relay. And the part of the circuit they first want you to test is the ground side right here. So we want to make sure that's good. So what we're going to do is put the, re the meter on ohms or resistance, put this side on a ground right here, and test the terminal right here. We'll pull the relay out to do this. And we should have less than 5 ohms. So let's try that now. I have a relay tester that's going to give me the ability to um, get the terminal down in the probe. You don't really want to take the probe of the tester and go down in there. You're going to spread terminals and stuff. So let's try that. And you want to make sure the key is off at this time too. And fuel pump relay was right there. Whoops. I think that's why we have a problem. <laughs> All right, come on. All right, pull the fuel pump relay out. And we can see on the bottom of the fuel pump relay is the different um, terminal numbers. So, and there's a little key on the side. So we're looking for either 85 or 86. 85 is over here, 86 is over there. So this goes in, and then this says 85 and 86 right there. Perfect. So let's see. So put this side on the ground. I'm just gonna double check, make sure I got a good ground. Put the voltage on. And there's 12 volts, so the ground is good. Go back to resistance. And just make sure. So there's less than five ohms, and that is on 86. Let me just do this, yeah. That's good. Okay, so we know that the ground is good. I would like to test this with a test light. Um, I, meters sometimes can give you a false reading. I mean, most likely that is fine, but that's the way the computer wants you to do it. Or that's the procedure that they want you to do. So what you can do to test for a ground that way is put your test light on power. There's a power source here. Double check your test light. That's good. And that's good. So 
as far as that test goes, that tells us this wire is good. All right, so now we got to move on to the next test. Um, let's see what it says next. So the next test we want to test is this wire that's commanded by the PCM. So it's going to send power through the relay to actuate the relay and then the ground, which we know that's good. So let's see if that's good, the power to that. And that would be the 85 terminal on the tester. So if you checked that on the relay itself, 86 was good. Now we're testing 85. So what we want to do is take a test light again. Make sure you put this end on the ground. Double check it. Make sure you have a good ground. That's good. <clears throat> now, I, I can't leave this right here. If I had someone to turn the key on, I could do that and just hold it there and watch for the light. So I'm just going to put a wire right here and put the test light right here like this. And then I'll go turn the key. What you can do is if you had a scan tool that could turn this on, then you'd want to turn the fuel pump on and see that that lights up. But turning the key, it should light up for two or three seconds. Right, turn the key on, and it does light up. So that means that circuit's good, which is good. So at this point, it's pretty much telling us that it's a bad relay. So what we can do is take this out and we have a relay that matches that. This one's for the AC. Put that in there. And let's go see if the car starts. All right, here we go. Moment of the truth. I hear a fuel pump. I'm gonna cycle it a couple times. All right, now we'll start it. And there we go, it's running. So I still have a check engine light on. I'll have to clear those codes out. So that should be good though. All right. So that's how you check out a fuel pump relay circuit. Um, that's the correct way to do it. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you out, make sure you subscribe to our channel, ring the bell, turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. In actuality, if I had this concern after I got the code from the scan tool, what I would have done is swap the relays right in the beginning. I wouldn't have taken out all the test equipment, but that's how you actually do it.